Hey y'all, welcome. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make two super flavorful and nourishing balance bowls. One with chicken and another one with a pecan crusted salmon. And this is all gonna to come together in 30 minutes or less, all thanks to our sponsor today, Drio, who's provided me with this 6.8 quart air fryer that is absolutely amazing. I have literally been using this every day since I have got it. And one thing that I love about this air fryer is how it looks, it is really, nice and can blend in with so many kitchens I also love that it has a window so that I can see my food while it is cooking now the touch screen is super easy to use and has a lot of preset options for fries or seafood or meats or bacon but I love the light you can actually cut this on and peek into your food while it's cooking without actually having to open it and it won't drop the temperature the inside is coated in a non-stick coating that is super easy to clean. And can we just give a hand clap for how big this air fryer is? There is so much space in here and you're gonna see that as I cook, I'm actually able to put the meats and the sides in the air fryer at the same time. And I'm just using my hand to show you how big this thing is. Unlike most air fryers, this air fryer can cook up to 450 degrees and it comes with a cookbook to give you lots of inspiration. Now you can make these meals without an air fryer, but guys, once you see how easy this is to use, you're going to want to buy the Drio air fryer because you're gonna love it just as much as I do. Now our first meal is the pecan salmon and for this bowl, we're gonna be using some delicious dino kale, which is in season right now, some butternut squash, which which I just love this time of year, as well as some pomegranates and some orange for a little bit of brightness. Now we're also gonna be using some garlic and y'all know pecans are the nut of the South, okay? Especially this time of year, they are plentiful and they're gonna crust the salmon for the grain, I'm using quinoa, but you can use any grain of choice. Some feta cheese will add a little bit of saltiness and the salmon is going to pair perfectly well with some Dijon mustard and a little bit of maple syrup just to sweeten it up. I'm also using some cherry tomatoes, which are in season because we have not hit a frost yet here in the South. And I'm gonna show you the rest of the ingredients as we go along. First, we're gonna prep the coating that's gonna go on the salmon and keep it super juicy. And so I'm just mincing up a little bit of parsley and putting in one fourth of the zest of this orange. Now, don't get crazy with the orange zest, okay? Because it can get bitter on you real quick, okay? Just a little bit with some garlic, some Dijon mustard, a little bit of avocado oil mayo. I did put in some maple syrup, but y'all, <laughs> I lost that footage and some thyme. I mix that all together and then I chopped my pecans to like a little bit of a medium size and this is going to give a nice crunch to the salmon. Spray some olive oil on your salmon because I don't do fat free cooking honey okay and I'm going to generously salt it and I'm also going to use some garlic powder, some onion powder, and some lemon pepper. Now, if you do not have orange, you can still make this recipe because I have done this recipe many ways. Um, I've also used just some lemon juice in place of the orange. You could also do some cilantro instead of parsley. Just make this your own. Now to crust the salmon, I've also used pistachios and almonds and they both work wonderfully. So if you don't have pecans, just swap out the nuts for something else. And I'm really using the nuts here in place of breadcrumbs to make a gluten-free option as well as add a healthy fat to this meal and it really pairs beautifully with the salmon. Allow this to sit at the side while you prepare your butternut squash which we're actually going to cook these at the same time in the air fryer. Now butternut squash can try to fight you okay so you better come prepared with a sharp chef knife okay because you're going to need that to tackle this dense winter squash but if you want to order some pre-chopped butternut squash that is perfectly fine or you could even substitute sweet potato. For even cooking, you actually wanna chop these to about three fourths of an inch cubes. Just make sure they're pretty regular and I'm gonna season these real simple. Just a little bit of olive oil, salt, garlic powder, onion powder, a little bit of thyme and some hot smoked paprika or you can just use sweet smoked paprika. I'm gonna to toss this all together and then I'm gonna to place this 
in the air fryer. Now I'm gonna put this, give this a jump start on the salmon because the salmon is gonna actually cook fairly quickly. Now I'm gonna add it to my air fryer and then I am going to set this at 400 degrees for 17 minutes. But I actually added the salmon after letting the butternut squash cook for about 12 minutes. And now we're gonna prep the kale, which I'm going to just devein because I find this, the vein to be a little bit tough. And then I'm gonna give it a nice wash to make sure it's super clean because y'all know greens can have some critters, okay? I'm gonna give this kale a rough chop and then I'm gonna steam it because eating raw kale just make me feel like, you know, I'm just chomping and chomping like a bunny rabbit and I don't like that feeling, all right? So I'm gonna steam it for about four minutes while the other ingredients cook. Now for the quinoa, I just cook this according to the package directions and some chicken broth, a little salt, a little olive oil, and that was that, baby, okay? And my quinoa was good to go. Now back at the butternut squash, it has been 12 minutes, and I'm gonna give this a shake just to, you know, <laughs> even cook it, okay? Because we, you know, we know how to cook around here, all right? And then I'm going to give a little room, okay? Make room for the salmon, okay? There's plenty of room in this air fryer. You can actually fit the butternut squash and the salmon here at the same time. I'm gonna lower the temperature to 350 degrees, and I'm gonna cook this for 10 minutes because you do not want your salmon to overcook and the butternut squash will finish cooking during this time when it's done you have a beautiful toasted pecan top as well as some soft and sweet butternut squash cubes we are going to prepare the best tahini balsamic orange dressing for this bowl now tahini is just ground up sesame seeds but if you don't have this just leave it out I'm adding one tablespoon of tahini as well as all of the juice from the orange for a little bit of sweetness. About three tablespoons of balsamic vinegar, salt to taste, and I'm gonna whisk in some olive oil just as my own preference, and that is our simple dressing, right? Now, the pomegranate is gonna add a nice juicy, texture and a lot of festive brightness to the salad and this was only a buck 20 cent at aldi so that's a great deal as well to assemble this bowl add in your kale some of your quinoa followed by the roasted butternut squash then i'm going to add in some of those chopped cherry tomatoes and just some spring mix i add on my pecan salmon I put a little bit of feta right on the spring mix and the tomatoes, a little avocado for some creaminess and some pomegranate seeds and use your dressing to your liking. And there is our first meal. Our next balanced bowl is a lemony herb chicken with roasted cauliflower and a roasted carrot hummus with steamed green beans and a delightful cucumber, tomato, and red onion salad. Cucumbers, we're getting the last of them here in the south. I'm using some chickpeas for the hummus as well as some red onion and some parsley just to tie the whole fresh salad together. The tahini will be used in the hummus for this recipe. And I actually went ahead and roasted my carrots. I used some Burberry spice with it, which is an Ethiopian seasoning, but you're welcome to just use salt, pepper, cayenne pepper, garlic powder, and cumin. And I've done it that way and it's been perfectly delicious as well as some roasted garlic with that. I have cauliflower, which is like one of the most versatile vegetables in the kitchen the green beans that will be steaming, as well as some more of these delicious sweet cherry tomatoes. I'll be tying all these flavors together with some tangy lemon, as well as rosemary and lots of other herbs. And y'all know I don't typically go for chicken breasts, but I'm gonna be straight up. In the air fryer, the chicken breast is extremely juicy. So we're gonna be using that today. Now, chicken breast is thick, okay, with two seeds on one side and it's thin on the other. And we gotta even that out, okay? So I like to take my rolling pin and literally whack the thick side, okay? The thick cysts got to just, you know, lean out, okay? If only I could do that to my actual fat, just whack it away, okay? But it don't work like that. Now, the beading is also gonna develop these little grooves and crevices in the chicken um, and allow the herbs to stick well. 
I'm going to add some olive oil because I don't want no dry chicken breast choking me, okay? Um, some lemon juice is going to tenderize everything. And I have a lot of seasons here from some cumin, some herbs, some thyme, some chicken bouillon. And I'll put all that down in the description box. And I'm going to just generously season this. And once I mix everything, I'm going to add salt to my own taste. I'm going to allow this to sit at the side while I prep the cauliflower, which will cook at the same time. Now cauliflower can cook with the chicken. Um, they have similar cooking rates. And this cauliflower a little beat up. Okay, he beat up, but he ain't out. Okay, he still got a little life up in him. Okay, so we ain't gonna throw him away. No food waste. So just trim off any parts that are bad. And I just like to break apart the florets and then just cut them down to size. Honey, if you have been enjoying this food inspiration so far, go ahead and like this video and subscribe for weekly recipes because as you clearly can see, I have my flavor game up and we are going to be eating good as well as eating healthy with these recipes. I'm going to season my cauliflower with some olive oil, some garlic powder, onion powder, thyme, as well as a little bit of smoked paprika for that nice color, a little salt to my own taste. And then I'm just going to toss this to make sure it's evenly coated. And at my air fryer, I'm going to put in both of my chicken breasts and I'm going to put in some of the cauliflower at the same time. This bad boy gonna do both of them, baby. We got room for all of it. Look over there, look over there. If you are two people, or if you wanna make this and you wanna meal prep, you could definitely do it very easily with this Drio air fryer. I'm gonna set this air fryer to 375 degrees for 13 minutes, and we're gonna flip halfway through. While this is going, go ahead and steam your green beans. This will only take about six minutes. And we can prepare this roasted carrot hummus at the same time. This hummus is low key addictive, okay? So I roasted two carrots with some seasonings and I roasted the garlic with it as well. I'm gonna pop out the garlic cloves, which are gonna be nice and sweet. And I'm gonna put those in there with these chickpeas that I've made in the Instant Pot. So they're very soft. Now, if you wanna use canned chickpeas, just use two chick two cans of chickpeas and boil them for about 20 minutes in the juices from the can and that will make them super soft in order to blend with the hummus i'm adding about a fourth of a cup of tahini about two tablespoons of olive oil as well as a third of a cup of the liquid from the chickpeas and i'm going to just salt and pepper to my own taste after I started blending this, I realized I forgot the lemon juice, okay? So I put in the juice from one lemon and I periodically scrape down the sides of the blender and I just continued blending until my hummus was nice and smooth. And I also ate this later on in the week, just paired with some raw veggies and chips and it was delicious. Halfway through, I'm going to now flip my cauliflower and I'm also going to turn my chicken just so that it can cook very evenly. This is only going to cook for about seven more minutes. Now, while that is going, we're just going to finish up by doing this bright and fresh cucumber, tomato, and red onion salad. Just dice up your cucumbers, put them to the side. I'm going to be adding in a little bit of red onion. It's going to put in a little bit of heat, which I enjoy. And also some of these sweet cherry tomatoes and a little bit of the parsley. For an easy dressing, just toss on a little bit of olive oil, apple cider vinegar, and just salt and pepper to taste. Mix that up and you've got yourself a very easy, very bright salad. And now my chicken breast is done. You see how we've been multitasking and we've just been doing all this at one time? Guys, these bowls literally only take about 30 minutes to do. So easy. The cauliflower looks great. And you need to set your chicken breast to the side to rest because if you cut it too quick, Honey, then juice is just going to run out and your chicken breast is going to be dry for real. And you don't want that, baby. Mm -mm, we, don't, we don't want that. All right. Now toss a bunch of salad greens down in your bowl. Throw in that beautifully golden roasted cauliflower, your steamed green beans, your juicy chicken breast, which you've chopped up. 
your cucumber, tomato, and red onion salad. And we're just gonna plop on some of that roasted carrot hummus and drizzle everything with some more of the pomegranate seeds from our first bowl. I hope these meals inspire you to get cooking and make something healthy and delicious. Thank you, Drio, for sponsoring this video. And I pray you all are blessed during this season. And I'll see you next time in Kamir's Kitchen. Goodbye.